Now I have to make this video and it may get cut short because I'm waiting for a very important call. Uh, this is Yusuf at my channel. Um, and uh, I would kind of just like to ask a question to people. How many times have you been arguing with a um, with somebody who's either an atheist or somebody who opposes Christianity in general who pursues the Christ myth and tries to say all these things are forgeries and they're forgeries and they're forgeries and they're forgeries um, when no scholars believe that and they can't point to any um, <laughs> sometimes they're reduced to pointing to Jordan Maxwell and Achari S and then finally they say well even if even well so what Christ existed but that doesn't mean he performed you know all these miracles or that he's God uh, which was never a claim that I made that since Jesus existed, therefore he's God. Um, I think it's funny how people paint themselves into a corner and then basically defeat uh, sometimes three weeks of bickering back and forth with me, of me being like, no, it's, it's, it's silly. Um, I know somebody by the name of the Cult of Dusty uh, claims that uh, Tacitus, Pliny, and Josephus are all forgeries. Maybe not in, in their entirety, but whenever they mention a biblical character, whenever they mention Jesus or the Christians or anything like this, that, that's a forgery added later. And the reason that he gives is that we don't have early copies. So the church must have tampered with that. Um, even though the church keeps, or, or whoever copied these um, things, kept in um, misspellings or um, inaccurate conclusions that these people made. Uh, I once ran into somebody saying, uh, oh, well, Tacitus never mentions, never mentions, uh, Jesus, he doesn't talk about Christ, the Christians, um, and he, yes, he does mention Christians, and he mentions the, and the, the other person said, well, they, they could have, they could have been any group, even though there's only been one group in, in history called Christians, um, and, uh, Tacitus mentions that, uh, the Christians, uh, were the followers of a crucified Messiah. And at one point, the, the text messes up and says, Christus, or something like that, which, um, and they, they said, oh, well, there's another person named Christus. Wait a minute, when you're dealing with, he's writing in Latin, so it's Christus. Christ would be Christus. Uh, if he's trying to make it sound Greek, it would be Christus which in Latin with the vowels, the only thing you would change, you would change in the I to the E to make it sound Greek. Uh, you wouldn't actually write it in Greek letters since Greek letters, the Greek alphabet is different than the Roman alphabet. But um, that's not a very important point, but when Tacitus talks about uh, the followers of, cru of a crucified Messiah, there's only been one of these people following a leader who was crucified. Um, what other religious group follows a, a uh, leader who was crucified and then believed that he was raised from the dead? And a group that was being persecuted by the Romans. Pliny misunderstands the Christians because he refers to them as atheists. Because he's referring to their actions, basically, that they, um, that they won't worship the gods. Uh, so he's, he's, he's viewing them as, as atheistic. Uh, now, if Christians existed in the first century, in the second century, um, Nero blaming the Christians for the burning of Rome, uh, if these people existed this early on, um, and they all claim, no matter whether it's Mars, whether it's the faction of Marcion, no matter if it's uh, the various factions of Gnosticism. Uh, whether it's uh, the early Catholics, what some people call proto-Orthodox, or what 
I would refer to as Orthodox, but were known as Catholics at the time, uh, or even the Manichaeans that would try to blend, which really weren't Christians, which were a blend of Zoroastrian Buddhism and Christianity with this, these other weird ideas added. They kind of just used those as pop terms. Um, they're all pointing back to saying, yes, this man, Jesus Christ, although they disagree on how to follow him, that they all agree that it's not something made up, and many of them are going... One of the things that um, a lot of Protestants like to point to, which is not a bad argument, is so these people are being tortured to death, uh, yet they believe it's some myth and that the body was stolen and that maybe Jesus really didn't exist or they're just doing it for money, uh, yet you could get out of being killed or even tortured by just burning incense to the emperor. And you, you were allowed to go. Uh, these people were known as lapsi, the people who really were just, and these weren't the, these weren't any of the early, what we call early, early Christians. This was more of the second, third, well, third century, um, where they got out of it, and basically they were condemned by their communities. These lapsi went up until about the time of Constantine, the church said, no, let's let these people back in. It was a point of weakness. And um, I think it was the Donatist or a, a faction from them, after them, that said, no, we're not going to let these, these people back in. They already denied Christ publicly. Um, <clears throat> now, people like to use Bart Ehrman. Um, and Bart Ehrman, in a debate, he was asked, what's... If you had the if uh, the New Testament manuscripts that you have, uh, and you were to translate them, the dip, if uh, let's say I take the NASB and the King James, would there be more or less difference? And he said there it would be less different than the difference between the NASB and the King James Bible. Um, Airman, I've also seen Airman shoot himself in the foot where he claims that there are no scribes. Because, see, the reason why I don't find Airman to be a good scholar is because he, his main focus is against fundamentalist evangelical Christians who basically believe the Bible to be sent down from heaven, which was never believed. Uh, it's books written by people for certain situations. Um... And he, if you read misquoting Jesus, you can see why he doesn't, um, why he, uh, the trauma that he went through, being taught that the Bible was basically heaven sent, 100% inerrant, no changes ever, all the copies of the Bible were the same, and then when he went to study them, he was shocked. Um, and he even says in the book, he, he, he uh, found out that, to surprise that the Roman Catholics, the Anglicans, and the Lutherans didn't hold this view. Um, the, the view that he held of uh, fundamentalist Christians. He, he actually went to Wheaton College, which is a bastion, like the biggest bastion of this Bible bubble ever, and it's about 15 miles that way. Um, <clears throat> but he says there's no scribes, which he knows damn well there, there were scribes. We know Baruch ben Neriah was a scribe of Jeremiah. We know the ancient world, there were many scribes. Um, and he talks about a standard of there, there were there was a case where a scribe could only just basically copy the letters. Basically, somebody who's copying manuscript could only barely copy the letters, and then then basically, I don't know the procurator or whatever. I think it was in North Africa said, "All right, you finally okay, fine, you're an official scribe." Um, as if that's the standard. As if that's the best educated scribe as if that's the norm. One case. You're setting one case to be the norm. Um, well, we know uh, many people had scribes. Even the people who were illiterate but came into money could get a scribe. Um, and he even admits Paul of having a scribe, which is kind of funny. But he denies scribes for uh, the books of Peter, um, James, things like this, which is kind of funny because the Jewish community, the one difference between the, the Jewish community and the Christian community, especially in ancient times, is that Jews were taught how to, how to write. They could read and write. 
whereas a lot of the Christians couldn't. Um, not saying that's the same for the first century, but uh, that's historically been uh, a characteristic of the Jews is that they were very literate people. Um, especially if you're, if James had anything to do with the Qumran community um, that were copying manuscripts uh, now, or the Essenes, I mean to say. Now, um, it's very funny uh, that the atheists are shocked, and uh, Albert at Labarum 312 made a video kind of talking about this, about how the atheists are now turning on uh, Bart Ehrman, because they thought, oh, Bart Ehrman destroys destroys Christianity. Well, he only destroys the Bible being basically uh, the idol, the golden calf of the Wheaton Christians, of the fundamentalist evangelicals, inerrant Bible, the Bible, the soul scriptura, all that kind of stuff. Whereas the Eastern Orthodox Church views um, the New and Old Testament as part of the tradition, and that the truth isn't in the Bible. You don't believe in the Bible. The truth is in the church. The church gave us the Bible. Let's say the writings of uh, the pastoral epistles weren't written by Paul. Let's say that. But let's say we, we're just attributing them to Paul. Let's say there's more letters by Paul that fell out of circulation that we don't want to use anymore. Um, that's the church. The church found those, those works useful and said, we're going to keep these in. It wasn't until very late, till the past 500 years, that people were reading the Bible to figure stuff out. It wasn't a very Christian thing to go through and read the Bible, at least not for 99% of the Christians. It was, uh, you would pray to God, you'd attend church, and this Douglas Wilson character who tries to attack Orthodoxy and say that Protestants had always existed, um, and he shoots himself in the foot by saying, you know, recounting these, these times when they said, oh, there's this painting of Jesus in the church, and this one bishop condemns it. Well, you just gave evidence for images being in churches at a very early time. Um, and it's ridiculous that he argues against that, but if he knew anything about early Christianity, worship was centered around the Eucharist. That's one thing that you see clearly if you start reading um, out the, not only the, the Bible, but outside the New Testament, um, not necessarily apocryphal works like Gnostics or, you know, Marcionites or whatever, but of the, uh, of people like um, Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, Ignatius of Antioch, uh, Polycarp, the if you, if you read them, it, the one thing that kind of keeps smacking you in the face in Christianity throughout the ages is that um, the worship on Sunday uh, always included the Eucharist. And yet these people say, oh, we're like the, we're like the first century church, we're like the early Christians. Um, and when, the, when these Christ mythers or atheists try to attack uh, and try to say, oh, well, Jesus was a fictitious character, um, yet they believe in Alexander the Great, and they say, well, Alexander the Great was never worshipped. Yes, he was. And in fact, there's a lot of, there's probably more miracles associated with Alexander the Great than uh, with, uh, with Jesus. Um, if you read uh, Roman literature from, you know, 2nd second, second century B.C., 2nd century A.D., Greek literature, 2nd century B.C. to 2nd century A.D., um, and... Uh, the sparse literature of the Jews, 2nd century B.C. to 1st century A.D. Uh, you don't need Christ traveling to India or influences from Buddha. How the teaching of Buddha is similar to Christ in any way, I don't know. I study Buddhism. Uh, it's... I mean, they're... I would like to, I would like to hear back from people. How, 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 how is it in any way the same? 
I'm not talking about one teaching that sounds maybe like this other thing, or one thing that sounds like Lao Tzu. Uh, but Jesus sounds like a Jewish person living in a Hellenized world ruled by Romans. And everything he says basically fits into that world. Uh, and these Christ mythicists seem to be nuts. There's my phone call. Peace to you. May God save Serbia. Added later. And the reason that he gives is that we don't have early copies. So the church must have tampered with that. Um, even though the church keeps, or, or whoever copied these um, things, kept in um, misspellings or um, inaccurate conclusions that these people made in general, who pursues the Christ myth and tries to say all these things are forgeries and they're forgeries and they're forgeries and they're forgeries, and they're forgeries um, when no scholars believe that and they can't point to any. Um, <laughs> sometimes they're reduced to pointing to Jordan Maxwell and Achari S. And then finally they say, well, even if, even, well, so I have bickering back and forth with me of me being like, no, it's that's, that's silly. Um, I know somebody by the name of the Cult of Dusty uh, claims that uh, Tacitus, Pliny, and Josephus are all forgeries. Maybe not in, in their entirety, but whenever they mention a biblical character, whenever they mention Jesus or the Christians or anything like this, that, that's a forgery. Christ existed, but that doesn't mean he performed you know, all these miracles or that he's God. Uh, which was never a claim that I made that since Jesus existed, therefore he's God. Um, I think it's funny how people paint themselves into a corner and then basically defeat uh, sometimes three weeks of... Now I have to make this video and it may get cut short because I'm waiting for a very important call. Uh, this is Yusuf at my channel. Um, and uh, I would kind of just like to ask a question to people. How many times have you been arguing with a um, with somebody who's either an atheist or somebody who opposes Christianity?